Hello, this is Samadan, and Samadan is on a journey to make gold. Now since the launch of Dragonflight, we've picked up herbalism and mining, and we've been playing a little bit of the campaign. We are currently level 66, as a guardian druid of course, and we are currently almost 80% of the way through the Anaran's Plains campaign. We only really started the campaign at about level 64, the first four levels were spent just literally logging in, doing some jewel gathering, flying around, exploring the world, and we've had lots and lots of fun. It's been absolutely amazing, whether I've got five minutes, 20 minutes, or an hour. Literally from here, I've been going out and choosing a zone, usually going over here and to the Inherence Plains, because it's quite open here and easy to spot all the different nodes. There's some nice writhe bark around here, and there's some nice... Titan forged and draconium around here and around here. But we've also been exploring Azure Span, slightly more dangerous area to go around if you're not max level and well geared. But there's some nice little bits of writhe bark around here as well. And it's been really, really fun. In terms of gold, we have made, well, let's have a look. Let's have a look at TSM. So this is just on Samadan. And so this past week, we started here at 20,000 gold, which is pretty much what we've been at for well over a year. Um, so looking back at the last week, you can see a massive increase in our gold. We've been selling things as and when we found them. So 10,000, 43,000 there, up to 45, 66, and 74,000. Literally just putting anything that I collect up on the auction house. Probably got a few things in the mailbox. Probably not so much from the last expedition that we went on. So there's another 2,700. Obviously the rousing order is doing very well at the moment. If I have enough I combine that into an awakened order or any of the other awakens once you've got them. So things are looking good. For a simple casual bit of gold making this is a very very good basis. Now in terms of the professions themselves we have herbalism is up at level 74 just through collecting things. All the frigid, tightened and lush variations of each of the herbs still give a level up. So we're working our way through those. We do have some knowledge points that we've accrued just through gathering things, not done any quests or any other sidelines or anything like that. This is literally just through gathering. So we're at 28 knowledge points yet to decide where to spend those. And then the same with mining 29 points there. And again, we've got the different hardened, molten and primal draconium giving us the most experience there. So very, very interesting times at the moment. And we're up at level 81 out of 100 for mining. Now we don't even have any profession accessories or tools equipped yet. So that's going to be the next stage. And then we're going to start thinking about specializations, deciding which of these to go into, because as you probably know, specializations are not currently respeccable once you've decided that's it. So in terms of making decisions on this, I've decided to just leave it for the moment whilst I've been trying to decide where to go. We'll have a look at that in a moment. The first thing we need to do is really look at this profession equipment. Now, if we had other professions and a lot of artisans metal, we could probably make this ourselves, but it's probably just as easy to buy some on the auction house. Now, each of these professions, both herbalism and mining, have different attributes. Your basic skill, your finesse, which increases the base amount you collect, your deftness, which makes you gather faster, and your perception, which gives you ability to spot more rare and more valuable materials. So of these, deftness is kind of useful if you want speed, but really finesse and perception are going to be the ones to, to focus on when it comes to equipment. Deftness is a nice to have, but at this point, although it's very useful, it still takes quite a while to go around and collect up the ores. In terms of artisan's metal, we have collected up 237 just through our gathering at the moment. Not sure what use we're going to have for those as a jewel gatherer, but we'll keep hold of those for now. We've also picked up four roused seedlings. Haven't found any rich soil to plant those in yet, but that will be another option to be able to get some extra herbs. So let's go have a look at the auction house. So in my favourites, I've got all the different herbs and ores at their different quality levels, just so I can keep an eye on the prices, which is very useful, especially the rousing air 
end order and all those things. You can see these are should be about ten time a tenth of the price of the awakened variants two five seven versus seven. 2700 there so there's a possibility of buying some cheap here and converting them into 10 and selling them as sets of 10 but once you take into account auction house fees and the variance in the market that's not necessarily a good way to make gold at the moment so with our 76,000 gold let's have a look we have professional equipment in its own category here so let's have a look at herbalism first it looks like if we have a look here we have two accessories and one tool so let's have a look at the accessories first. So we've got a choice between a floral basket and a gardening hat. The gardening hat has different item levels here. This one at 3, 4, 6. It increases the amount of deafness and perception. So the 3, 4, 6 would seem to make sense. So I'm going to buy one of those at a very cheap price. And we also have the floral baskets, both at the same price of 1200 Increases the finesse. So we'll take the higher one, so we'll take the cheapest then. Don't believe there's any variations on them though, it's all quality five. So we'll take that one. So that was two accessories and one tool we need to look for, of which we've got uh, the spade, which is four herbalism skill. And this gives you another six herbalism skill and something to a random stat. Let's have a look, see if these are specific. Okay, so perception, deafness and finesse would be our options here. So looking back at these, of the two, between perception and finesse, it's the rare things that give you the most value for your money. So it makes sense to go more perception than it does for finesse. Because whilst you might get more things, if they're only at five gold apiece, that doesn't equate to much. But if you're getting more in perception, then you're going to be able to get something that's worth maybe ten times as much. So I think I'll go perception more than finesse so 79 perception is the one we want to go for there we go okay so let's have a look at mining same sort of um, thing applies here two accessories and one tool so we'll go with the three four six again there's one very cheap one i'm very lucky here i'm going to take the cheap one and leave the more expensive ones i could effectively turn just turn around and put that on for five thousand gold and maybe make a bit of gold there, but uh, we'll keep it as it is for now. So that was the helmet we bought there. So let's go for the satchel, which is all finesse. So let's go with one of those. And one tool, let's go with the higher pickaxe. And again, we will go with perception over finesse or deafness. So perception at 79, we'll buy that one. Okay, so looking at these, we have 0% in each of these. Let's go put on our tools and see what that does. Don't know in terms of real terms what this will mean. So let's have a look. We should go to just right click and pop these on. There we go. Accessories equipped there. So that's 8% perception. Perception 7.9% it increases. Another 7% finesse. And now we're up to 12% 12, 12 perception, 11 deftness, and another 6.47% for finesse. And then again the same with mining quality five on each of those seven eleven and twelve okay so we're gaining the plus six skill as well and the plus six skill there so that's slightly better in in terms of those in terms of things needing a huge amount of skill to get the higher quality i've never collected anything at quality level three everything's always been one or two at my current skill level because the current primary reagent difficulty here for writhe bark is 140 and 140 here saxifrage 140 so we're going to have to get closer to that if we want to do any better at this point a couple of things we haven't done uh, refining herbs that comes out of the specialization and with mining it's the same draconium cascarite and cerevite uh, also have the options here under the specializations so here would come a choice do we start specializing now? There's obviously different versions we can go into. Let's have a look at herbalism first. So we have Bountiful Harvest. This is allowing you to extract most from each individual plant. So looking on each of these, see, I would be thinking in when I'm looking at these, okay, what's my end goal? What am I what am I aiming for at the end of the tree? So going throughout all of this, all the way up to maximum 40 points in Bountiful Harvest. That gives me the ability to refine herbs, and this is refined herbs at level two. Now, this refined herbs is quite interesting. Looking here at the refined herbs, it takes five 
and returns it into one of the next quality. So refine herb three, you need five quality two to do into one quality three. So in order for this to be profitable, the price of a quality three herb needs to be five times at least that of a quality two herb. Oh, I love the equipment. <laughs> <laughs> that looks fantastic. So having a look at these and we go into our favourites, if you look at things like the Bubble Poppy 2 versus 3, price is 98 versus 206, so that's only double, that's not that's not five times the amount. And the same with Draconium Ore, 37 to 166. That's getting closer. Hocken Bloom, potentially five gold. That should really be at least 25 gold for that. So I'm not seeing a huge jump between this one and this one. I mean, that's relatively decent, but it's still not quite enough to be economically worth going down that specialization. So perhaps that's not the way to aim first off with our specializations. So this is probably not worth our 40 points straight away. I mean, yes, the horticulture, giving us Hock and Bloon, and this one will be good for additional Rive Bark. That would be useful if you did have the 40 points, because going in this gives you extra Rive Bark, which is at a very good price at the moment. What else do we have? So Botany um, gives us extra Finesse per point, and we also get 15 Deafness, and going through here we increase our Deafness, Perception, Finesse, going to the end, and then your Mastery in Botany is such you can gather herbs whilst mounted. Now this is a very, very useful quality of life improvement. As being a druid we found in Old World expansions, this was a very good way to get ourselves a lot of herbs very quickly. And then sub-specializations from here, so extra perception, which is always useful. We can go gather seeds more often, um, actually propagating seeds, decayed seeds. So these seeds are useful for extra bonus effects if you plant them in soil. And this one gives us extra deafness. Absorb the elements of the lands and gathering from these creatures. You have a chance to gather these elements from them. Oh, that's from the plant creatures themselves. Don't think there's as many I've encountered at the moment. And then extra skill while gathering lush herbs. So those are nice to have, but not necessarily the end point. The end point here is definitely that. That's a good aim for the first 40 points, perhaps. Then we have mastering the elements. So we're going from a new ability to overload an, an elemental herb, which from my reading happens maybe once a day or once on first gather and then has a reduced cooldown on it for something like an hour. I remember reading on the Wowhead article about this. And then we've got subspecializations, deafness, and all the way to the end, gather more essence from elementally charged herbs. So this will allow us to focus in the, the frigid, the, the different elements here, tight and touched. That would be useful for our awakened order going that way. It seems to me the, the most logical first step is to go here for botany and go up to 40. But I'm not going to make that decision now. I don't think I'm only going to get some extra deafness and perception and finesse whilst I'm not exactly at 40 points here. So that's my idea and it's probably going to be my same idea when it comes to mining because I think there's an equivalent here in metallurgy, which allows you, and that's the uh, quality one, mining process, I think. Yeah, mining whilst mounted is this one. So these ones are probably the ones I would want to spend my first 40 points in, but I'm not going to commit to those now because maybe with a bit of research, I might find something that I might prefer to do differently, but that is definitely the most logical choice for just quality of life improvements. So whilst we have the points, we're gonna leave them in there at the moment. Yes, we would get extra deafness and finesse whilst we're leveling this up through. But as this is a one shot deal and we can't respec, I'm going to just be a little bit more cautious about locking in my choices here at this point. Even so, we do have our mining equipment. So depending on my playtime and what I'm doing, I'll either do a little bit of the campaign or I'll go out and gather some herbs. My usual starting point will be here in Valdraken because I have the rested XP and with all the glyphs unlocked, it's a very easy case of popping out and then usually just taking a little detour around, having a look on the mini map. Something pops there. That's an interesting icon. I hadn't seen one before like that. What's this icon? Uh, Winds of the Isles. Okay, probably not a good place to park. <laughs> let's park back down again and let's have a look. What else have we got? Hock and Bloom there. Again, one of the cheaper ones, so we can avoid that. Just check. That might be rich draconium. Difficult to tell at this point. 
It's a self-grown Hockenblue. Okay, that's interesting. That must have come from a rich soil. Can we gather that? Well, it's noticeably faster. 2,500 XP. And that was rank 2. We got four of those. Let's go for a little travel up this way. Somewhere in here. Here we go. Some Titan Touch Cerevite. And also deeper in some possibly Hockenbloom. I can't quite tell. Draconium deposit over there as well. Let's go cat form so we can go a little bit faster. Grab the Hockenbloom whilst we're here. And then right behind that is some Draconium. If I can avoid combat, if I can, it's always useful. Something else higher up. Let's go have a look. You missed it. It was up here somewhere. There it is, right on the edge. Is this windswept? No, it's not. Windswept is always difficult because we can end up plummeting to our death because we haven't got any goblin gliders or anything. Slightly risky. There we go. You can see it right down on the floor. Thankfully, you don't have to worry about crash landing. So that would be my routine, um, depending on how much time I've got. don't have a lot of time at the moment. There's a rock wall and a ceravite. So I'm going to go straight back to the auction house and put these on. But this has been my routine. Uh, for the past week or so and it's turned out to be very profitable from a starting point of view. Obviously there's a lot more gold to be made if you specialised in all the other professions and you maximised your playtime but we only have limited playtime so we're doing the best we can. Let's just take a moment to admire our herbalism garb here <laughs> which looks fantastic. So I'd usually put these straight on the auction house just using the standard interface. Ooh, I got baited on that one, I put it for 12. I think that got sold. Let me just check. Yep, sold straight away. Didn't pay attention there. Whoops a daisy. Let's try this. 258 is a better price. It pays to slow down when you're posting. Doesn't hurt to go up a price bracket if you want to, um, depending on how many there are. If you don't mind the price that it's at, then that's absolutely fine. Some Kazgarite ore, 185. You can hear the sales pinging off in the background in near real time. And 14 gold. That's one less, and that's everything else that we have here. So auctions-wise, those have all sold. The earth was a bit of a shame. I lost out on maybe 50 gold there. Uh, the browsing orders at a nice price at 775. Just the Kazgarite ore left. What's our competition like there? We are still in the top for that, so that should possibly sell. Certainly within 12 hours. If we look at TSM, those sales add up to a thousand gold. Very quick, just literally five minutes worth of work there. Didn't go very far. But that's currently where we're at. Having a whale of a time here in Dragonflight. Really enjoying the content. Enjoying going through and playing the campaign. Taking our time on it. And enjoying the chapters as they come up. And enjoying the landscape. And doing some herbalism and mining as we go. We will carry on the gold making journey. We'll keep on with the herbalism and mining. Once we've got some more knowledge points and have got the campaign completed and got to maximum level then we'll unlock world quests and go and find some other ways to get some knowledge whilst we can but that's it for now for samadan until next time happy gold making and we'll see you very soon